what I've done so far is I took my pumpkin that grew in my yard as a surprise pumpkin. It was part of a vine that was grown by my the my lady, <laughs> my neighbor lady who lives next door to the east of me, and it grew through my fence and down the fence wall and across the little walkway and all the way over and up into the roadie bush and then it grew and it grew and it grew it had a whole bunch of little blossoms on it and finally the correct blossom produced a pumpkin I couldn't believe it I couldn't believe the stuff like that never happens for me so we waited until it, it was definitely a green variety that turns orange as it ages um, and right when it started to kind of get a little blush of orange, um, it was time to unfortunately cut it because of the um, the issue. You know, it was like our, our yard, their yard. We were trying to get them to not cut the vine down. They didn't want us to cut the vine. The vine got um, real mildewy. I live in the Pacific Northwest. So, I picked it, or I cut it, I should say, and I'll go get my little pumpkin. Hold on a minute. So, I had some, oh, some baby's breath left over from anniversary flowers, birthday flowers, just general, you know, everyday flowers, and I save stuff like that. And there is my surprise pumpkin. She's not very big, but what I did when it was about this big, I went out, that's when I discovered it, and I went outside and put a piece of cardboard underneath the, she was laying, let's see, she was laying this way, her, her stem was like this, so the cardboard was right there. And then I would just like once a week or so I'd go out and turn just a little bit to kind of keep some of the pressure off of one side. I don't know where or why that occurred that she was not resting on that side of her little round body. But anyway, otherwise, that is one perfect little pumpkin. And she's been in the house now for three weeks. Um, I'm not seeing any signs of degrading. She's not soft. She's, she sounds kind of hollow. But when I picked her, she was green. And over time, she's, there were like orange streaks and little speckles of yellow. And I was just like fascinated by this. So anyway, here she is. It was wonderful to have a little surprise pumpkin grow in my yard. And then I just took some baby's breath and hot glued it around the top. And it's on my dining room table now. So, I have been wanting to make another um, little pin cushion from the Simplicity 8532. I think this is just adorable and I want to try to get it where this isn't really a problem. And this isn't an issue. I want a really sturdy stand up and be somebody mannequin pin cushion. So as much as I love her I'm going to make another one and I'm gonna go grab my fabric and I will be right back. All right I've decided that I want to make part of it in the floral and part of it in the ticking. I don't know how that's going to look, but we're going to give it a go. All right, let's see what pieces we need to go for this. Okay guys, so you know me, I have to have a project to sew, 
and I'm hoping that I can get at least some of the sewing done but um, today was spent doing other things um, I tried to practice doing the log cabin block with the add a ruler or add a quarter ruler oh my goodness I'm gonna have to really work on learning how to do that because wow so I just put that away and I decided I want to make another of one of these um, this is one of my favorite pin cushions she needs a little work I think I can kind of maybe get it where she's not wobbly this way <laughs> or can levitate pole dance <laughs> I don't I just as much as I love her I want to try to improve so I decided that I was going to use some ticking for the doll body, which is piece number nine in the Simplicity Pattern 8532. And you have to have two of these cut from your outer fabric, which I will go ahead and do. And I found, to be honest with you, that it's just so much easier to trace the body and do it that way than it is to pin it and cut it out. What did I, oh there it is, okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to trace. I really like the idea of this ticking. It has sort of a a vintage feel. these so that they are right sides together like that and then you stitch all the way around except for this bottom edge right here okay so I had to flip it over to make sure, you know, sometimes you can see the stitches on one side better than you can on the other. And that proved to be the case this time. So I flipped it over and, you know, stitched on the, on the little spots that I had missed. And because this is kind of small and because it, um, it has to be flipped out to the up uh, you know to the right side it might tear so we have to be especially careful and what I'm doing right now is I'm getting ready to you can kind of see through where some of the st stitching you can see the lines what I'm going to do is use those lines as a guide the light coming through I think you can see it right there what I need to do is clip up to that line of stitching. Now I did do several lines of stitching um, to kind of help do a little bit of stay stitching, but we do have to clip to get this to turn. All right, we're gonna see how it goes. Ooh. There we go. There's our little doll. So next step for her is some um, polyfill. I will be right back. So I, I have decided I'm going to use 
my um, my little crumbs instead of polyfill. I have almost a whole bag of polyfill. see about what I'm supposed to do because I don't remember and I'm trying to do this a little bit better this time all right so we've got her leaving an opening for turning trim the corners clip the curves we did all that stuff the body firmly and ladder stitch the opening closed okay and see then they're showing that there's this Thing inserted all the way up to the very tippy top I don't know if you can see that but if you have stitched the body close I suppose the ladder stitch is supposed to leave you room to poke something through so we'll just do it like that I feel like that's that's pretty good so the next step is to close up the box, grab a needle and some thread, and I'm going to hide the knot down in there. I'm going to turn this to the inside. And I'm just going to go Okay. So that's been stitched and then I'll just knot off here. Alrighty, so there's that. I do have some more crumbs, don't I? Yes, I do. Alright, next, I think I skipped a step because I was all excited about making a new doll body, but I'm supposed to make the pin cushion and the rosettes. So my plan here is. If I have enough of this, oh, I barely, oh, almost. Well, I might have to get a different piece of this because this is definitely going to be this part right here. So I'll be right back. All right, I found a piece that I started to use for something else yesterday. And... cut this out. Alright, let's see what it says now. Pin cushion. Alright, so we're supposed to stitch P6 together, leaving an opening for turning, clip the curves, and stuff it firmly. Okay. Alrighty. So, I went around the circle twice with a straight stitch. Then I went around the circle with a very close zigzag stitch. I am not going to clip the curves. I, I was thinking about how this would work if you had a serger. And I want to see if these curves will turn having been zigzagged. And um, 
you get a good look. All right, this time I'm going to use polyfill. Really much fuller than that one was at this phase. So, wow, kind of cool. Let's see what we're supposed to do. Sew that up, I imagine. Ladder stitch, just like we did with our little doll body. Okay.
Okay, so I discovered, of course, that one skewer will fit, but it's more difficult to get it to go up and through this with fabric crumb uh, stuffing. I've done it, it's all the way up to the very top, but I basically had to just turn it like I was, you know, putting a, um, a bolt into something and it finally broke through and it went all the way up here to the top. So it's pretty well established, but then I realized, of course, that I don't have a pointy end on this one. And so my only option is probably going to be to glue something like this. But that seems awfully high, so I'll probably end up just cutting off a section and then glue it with the hot glue. But I wanted to wrap it anyway. I thought it would be prettier um, wrapped in the ticking. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to see how tall I want this to be. I, bet, I guess about that tall. So I need to cut it so that I have just enough of a point to go into the rosette here. So it would appear that this is my spot. Okay. So now I will glue this together. We're just going to have to see how it goes. This piece of scratch paper. This is just regular old hot glue. I think I do want it a little lower. I want to have enough um, of a point down here on this end to really, you know, make it worthwhile. All right, and next I'm going to take, I did cut strips earlier today, and I'm just going to kind of wrap them at an angle. So I plan to glue. Just a section at a time, about like that. My hope is that I don't burn my fingers too much. Okay. So the little one will go on first and I did create a hole in the center. I don't know that it's going to be big enough to accommodate both of the skewers so I'm going to have to cut that open just a little bit more but it will be obscured. Okay there we go and the same probably for the larger of the rosettes. So I'll just clip it like so to make the hole a little bigger. And there we have that. Now I do need to tie a bow to hide this part.
I'm pretty much filling up this space underneath the rosettes with hot glue. sure that I've really made it any better. You know, this go round either. I'm just going to have to keep making them, I guess, till I finally get it perfect. Mm. Now she needs a skirt. All right, so I have a little hem and I'm about to gather up the skirt using the bobbin thread on a basting stitch. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna tie this on Turned. Yeah, I did. But there you go. I think it's quite cute. I like the little covered up stick. It feels a lot more sturdy uh, than this one. And I will, I know I will have to put a piece of cardboard on the bottom just like I did with this one to keep the uh, pins from poking through. But, um,. I think they're really cute. I love them to death. And uh, when I come back, we're gonna work on another project. I just had like, I don't know, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I have five people walk by the house with dogs. They're all wearing coats and hats and gloves and mittens. Okay, so I've got this fabric that I've got the right sides out with the selvages together and I want to see if I have enough fabric before I proceed with the skirt project because you never know and even though there's a lot of ease in the pattern I'm going to go ahead and cut it slightly larger because the measurements are way off 
So um, even though we've measured and we know what we need to cut out, being a skirt pattern, I feel like it should I suppose what I ought to do though before I start cutting things bigger is make measurements and I wrote some things down on the pattern right here okay so what I need to do right at 8 inches I need to write all these down or I won't remember Okay, and then the back. Oh, wait a minute. That is the end. Five eighths. Okay, so eleven and five eighths. Is twenty four. So it would be twenty three. That gives us this waist that is several inches larger than. What I need to do is subtract the seam allowances, which are would also be one and plus one half is one so it's three inches too big I mean oh uh, I can it's so weird because I can visualize these things okay from 39 where is it? 39 39 would be of course would be 37 which is exactly I think she is actually a size 4. Alright, so I am going to cut this pattern out on a size 4. Total of 12 for the back. It's an interesting layout, to be completely honest. So we take the side that has the salvage edge right here, this one. We pull it up like so. And then we push this back down just a wee bit like this. We're going to be cutting the waistband, I think, on that piece of up, up here, this right here that's outside of our um, salvage is going to be that, that waistband. Mm -hmm. I hope you had fun in today's little crafty project. I know I enjoyed making this one. It is definitely a lot more sturdy 
There is a lot more um, pad in this pin cushion. I want to see how hard it is. That pin isn't even going through. I'd have to push it to get that pin to go through. And that's just not the case with this one. Um, I just didn't, I guess I just didn't fill this one to the brim like I did this, this particular uh, larger one. It has a lot more polyfill um, that is obviously helping with that pin situation. I mean, I've pushed those all the way through to the t little tops, and they're not poking through. So that's, that's really good. I wonder if one of these pins would poke through. Nope. Now, if I get it right on the edge, yes, it will poke through. But I don't typically do that, so I'm not too concerned. Okay. Um, a sewing needle, rather large needle, and a sewing needle. And then I have a large needle and a sewing needle here. So I feel like having it when I know which one I need to pick up, like I know this is all glass head pins. So if I grab this and I'm using, you know, I'm ironing and, and pressing and using pins, this one I know I'm not going to make the mistake of accidentally grabbing a plastic head pin. So um, that works really well for me. I like the idea of this, this system as well. But thank you guys again, and I will get busy on this tomorrow, and I hope you'll join me for that. Thank you so much. Hit the thumbs up if you liked this video. If you want to see more, click the little subscription bell, and you'll be notified when I have a new video out. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.